Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. Today I have a tutorial on how to make a gift bag. Um, this is one that just I was just really just messing around in my office and I thought I fancy making a gift bag with a flower on the front. So um, I'm not going to show you how to make this flower. This I've already filmed the tutorial for this, but it's going to be um, uh, going live in a couple of days time. So um, if you want to know how to, to um, make the flower, just hold fire and you'll see it in a couple of days time. But anyway, um, this is the project we're going to make today. It's a nice bag and I have designed the, or I've, I've set the measurements so it works equally for um, US standard, a, a standard cardstock and ours here in the UK as well. So the piece of cardstock I've got, I'm sorry it's in black, hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'm filming in daylight today so hopefully it will show up. There's only a couple of score lines. So it's 8 inches by 11 inches so it will fit your maximum length and our maximum width. Right, so with the long side at the top, the scoring is quite simple. It comes at four and a half and six and a half. And in metric, it's a very slightly differently length. The cardstock is very slightly different in length. It's 28 by 20, and you would score it at 11 and a half and 16 and a half. So basically, it's just a smidgen difference. Turn this round so you've got the 8 inch side at the top or your 20 centimetre section at the top. Score that at 2 inches and 6 inches and in metric you would score that at 5 centimetres and 15 centimetres. Right, get that out of the way. Fold up the score lines. So you can see it's, you know, even though I put it on black, which hopefully I'm looking at my monitor at the moment, it seems to be showing okay. If it's not, I'm really sorry, don't shout at me. Um, I know there are complaints about doing scoring on dark score, dark cardstock. I've seen it and I've watched videos myself um, and you just can't see what's going on. So I hope you've been able to see and apologies if you haven't. So fold and burnish on all the score lines. I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and it's these horizontal lines here. Now I'm going to hold this up because a lovely chap called Jason asked me where I did my snipping so I'm going to just try and focus. Oops, that's not going to focus. There we go, that should focus. So Jason, you wanted to know where I cut what I'm going to do is I'm my score lines. You can see it's actually a groove. I'm cutting right on the edge for this section here, which is going to form my side. So I can bring that closer, and then I'm going to cut into this section, which is the flap. So this part here is perfectly straight. So that hopefully will answer your question. So I will do the same on here. So this is going to form a side as well. So I'm cutting just to the left of that little groove. So hopefully you can see that. And I'm just going to cut that bit away. There we go. Right, let's bring this down and refocus. There we go. Right, turn it around and do the same on the other side. And what it means actually by cutting that um, perfectly straight there is we know that that line is going to form a perfect square on the base. Right, I want some glue. I've got my liquid glue. I'm getting very short on this. I gave my dad a bottle the other day and then didn't realise I didn't have any spare. So I've only got one left. Oh no. So those two flaps there, I fold it up. And this is where, by keeping that line perfectly straight, I know that I can line up to the bottom here and it's going to be a perfectly straight box. And the same over here. Again, line up that line there. Just hold that for a minute. And then more liquid glue over here. And over here. Oops. Oh, that is so going to squash, isn't it? Oops. Right, and again just line those up, I tilt that so that's in the light, 
I try and film in the daylight so that I'm not having to use spotlights, but we've had the school holidays and it's been a nightmare, but my dad's cake can cover the children off. And I think that's try. My husband's outside with one of the others and the other one's in the bed. And I've got a massive window here that I can make use of the daylight. So I'm taking full advantage. So hopefully you can see that. Right. Let me find my front and my back. I did this the other day and I lost my back. Right where the joints are, that's the back. So on the front, I'm going to be putting a couple of layers of uh, card and paper. Now this one's Gingham Garden. This is the Melon Bamboo color. And I'm just using polka dot parade because I actually haven't used it for a while. I'm gonna sponge the edges. Now this white section here is four and a quarter by three and three quarters, which in metric, you would cut your white layer to let me have a look at my notes 11 by nine and a half centimeters so that's that one there and then this layer in imperial is four by three and a half inches and in metric you would cut yours down to ten and a half by nine right so that's those bits and then I've got my handles and this is an eight inch strip in length. Actually, all three are all eight inches um, or 20 centimeters. This one is one and a half inches wide, one and a quarter and one inch. And in metric, you would have your 20 centimeter strip and you would have four centimeters, three and a half and three. So I'm gonna very quickly sponge those up. Now, maybe I should have done this before. Oh well, it doesn't matter. How are we doing for time? Oh, six minutes, that's okay. I try and work in real time. One of the very first videos I did, um, or after my first few, one of the comments I received from um, a fellow demonstrator who's in the same team as me, um, he said he liked the fact that I worked in real time. So you can see actually just how long it will take to do a project. So other than the fact that I've cut in advance, you know, this is how long it would take you to build up the project. And I'm going to be starting some workshops soon on how to mass produce. So, you know, while I have cheated and cut these ahead of time, that is actually how you would work anyway. If you were making 20 boxes, you're not going to sit, sit and do one and complete it from start to finish. You'd cut everything. You'd cut all of your strips, your bases and everything and put them all to one side. Right. Let me stick these down. I've got some snail. So the white bit on first. Just sort of line it up into the middle. I think I'm going to pop this one. Should I pop this on dimensionals? No, I won't. I'll just go for speed today. So the spotty layer. And then <clears throat> the same on here with the strip for the handle. And obviously this will go right up to the edge, but actually it's going to get hidden inside the bag anyway. Another section there. I'm going to put the handle on in a minute. I just want to finish off doing the decorating here. I've got Happiness which is from the uh, Loving Thoughts set. This was one of the very first I bought and I love it and I use it ever so frequently. Um, I wouldn't have said it's got particularly gifty kind of sentiment. So let me bring it in so you can see. You know, you wouldn't put it on a, on a gift particularly. They're more, literally, the thoughtful sentiments that you would have. You'd put them on notebooks or things like that, or cards. You know, you wouldn't necessarily stick them on a, on a gift. Right. My modern label punch. Perfect fit. And then I want to have my decorative, lab decorative label punch, one of those, and then I've got some more of the Polka Dot Parade. I'm just going to have, this is the curly label punch, so I'll have one of those. Move that back out of the way, bring in my ink, sponge everything up. Like I say, as I said before, if you were mass producing loads of these, you would 
sit and do all of your sponge, you know, you do all of your cutting first, then you do all of your stamping, then you would do all your sponging, then you would do all your, your layering, and then that's how you would do it. Um, and great for all of you guys in the UK and Europe who are coming to um, uh, convention. Our convention is in November this year here in the UK. So mass producing 150, 200, 300 swaps. I've heard of people who are planning on making 500 swaps. Good for you. <laughs> I haven't got that time. But this is how you would do it. You would just set up yourself a little production line. All right. There we go. I shall have that down at the bottom. And then my flower, I've already made it, again with the real red, which is the, the card stock in here. To hold these down, you need sticky strip. I tried with one with... Um, uh, mini glue dots, it didn't work, didn't like it, didn't want to play the game. So, sticky strip, far better option. And then I'm just going to randomly stick bits on. And you can be quite tough with these actually, so it's not an issue to pull the backing off. Oops, and it's going to stick to me. And that would be all the neighbourhood children outside. I hope they're not going to ring on the doorbell to see if my children are coming out to play. I can't get this. I can't get this one off. I will leave it for now. Right, pop the flower up there. And then a couple of bits of sticky strip for the handle. Oops. And we put those on the um, on the decorated bit because this is we, I want this bit to be inside. I don't want the handle on the outside. Oh, Sticky Strip hates me today. Right, this is a two inch section here. So you just sort of eyeball it into the middle. Oh, I forgot to curl it. Grab your bone folder and just curl and it will all quite happily bend over. Right, and then the other bit, again, eyeball that in. And that is a little gift bag. It's quite sweet, you could do it in any colour way you wanted. Um, you could put any colour flower on, you don't have to put the flower on, you could put anything you like. So, I hope you like it, and as I said, in a couple of days time, the video tutorial will be for this. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye.